you know, I really hate shooting in front of my computer. Um, it just totally messes with the lighting. And I mean, not that I have great lighting to begin with, but you know, um, it's better than this. Uh, so hello, geeks, freaks, and all those unique. I'm MC Frotus. And I um, was hoping to have my review of the latest Supernatural episode or Discovery out, but neither of those can happen today. They're going to have to wait till this weekend. Um, just to explain why I keep on not being able to get them out on um, the day, um, that's because uh, Supernatural and Discovery air uh, um, eight, eight and nine o'clock uh, in Canada. Um, so I have to watch them back to back and make all these notes and just be overwhelmed with just all of the stuff that I have to write. Um, so I kind of need Friday to sit on it. But uh, lately I've been liking coming out with a video every day. So last week this happened too. So I feel like we're getting into like a fanfic Friday type situation, which I'm not mad at. So maybe we'll keep doing that for the next little while. Um, though things are going to get even more complicated because also we're going to have the Mandalorian and I think that's going to be dropping at like, you know, midnight on Friday. So that's almost a Thursday thing as well. So, um, uh, but we're almost done with Supernatural. So that's one of the reasons why, um, this is going on these days because just, I have so much stuff that I just don't know how to quite sort it out. Um... But uh, I thought that today, instead of having my videos, which I will try to get out over the weekend, um, I would read uh, fanfic. Now, last time I did Star Trek, so I've been in a lot of fandoms. Uh, and probably the fandom where I had the most popularity um, was the Sherlock fandom, which I was in from, I think, uh, 2010 until basically this year. Um, and I'm still in the Sherlock and just a little bit. Um, I did stories uh, about Sherlock and Molly Hooper, mostly, um, aka Sherlolly. And uh, this is one of those stories. Uh, this is set... Um... Oh, hold on a minute. Hey, monster. Come here. Oh, I had a monster who wanted some attention. This is Skywalker. Hey, Bubba. I'm trying to make a video. I love you. He's going to go lie down somewhere. But he was, like, outside my door and making lots of noise. So I needed to bring him in. Um, anyways, so this story is set um, right before the final problem which is the, the series finale of the series four. So, um, uh, this story is called Conversation. Um, it wasn't often Molly had a day off from work. She seemed to always be trapped down in the morgue, waist, no, waist deep, wrist deep in a corpse. Not that she didn't love her job, but it could be exhausting and even she needed to have a break. It was a beautiful day, perfect for taking a walk down to the shops to buy some fresh pasta. She had bought her house specifically because of the large kitchen. Molly loved to cook. Unfortunately, she spent most time, more time slicing cadavers than she did veggies. She giggled to herself over the terrible joke. She was just grabbing her coat to head out when she heard her mobile phone ring. She picked it up and looked at the caller ID. She blinked at the name, Mycroft Holmes. Molly felt her heart begin to thrum in her chest, hanging her coat back up. What had happened to Sherlock? His brother never contacted her, not since Sherlock had stayed with her briefly following his jump. Her hand trembled as she lifted it to her ear, pressing the accept call button. Hello? Is he all right? What's? Hello? Molly Hooper? The voice sounded pleasant and sweet. She was most definitely not Mycroft. She had met Mycroft's assistant, Anthea, before. Perhaps it was her? Who is this? This is Euros Holmes. I'm Sherlock's sister. Oh! Molly let out a nervous laugh. I didn't know Sherlock had a sister. I'm surprised he hasn't mentioned me. I thought you two were close. 
Yuris paused for a long moment. I'm passing on a message. There was an incident at 221B. It's gotten a bit blown up. Molly's hand flew to her mouth and she let out a gasp. Oh my god, is Sherlock, is everyone? Everyone's fine. They were able to get themselves out all right. Not a scratch on them. But I thought you might worry. Molly sighed in relief, her hand pressing to her chest. Thank you for telling me. What happened? Oh, you know my brother. Always getting into trouble. Molly walked back into the kitchen. She grabbed hold of the marble countertop, trying to steady her shaking legs. Was it an experiment? It's always an experiment with Sherlock. Everything he does is an experiment. But you know that. You're always helping him with them. Something in Eurus's voice made Molly think back to after Sherlock's fall, when they had taken refuge at her house, the feel of Sherlock's mouth slanting against hers. She so shook herself out of that thought. You know, I don't think Sherlock has mentioned you. He must have. Molly could hear the disappointment in Eurus's voice. I'm not around much. I'm almost always locked in my office. But he's never mentioned me? I thought you were close. Molly squirmed, gripping tighter to the countertop. Well, I mean, yes. We've known each other a long time, and... Sherlock's helping me with an experiment right now. The tone of Eurus's voice had changed. It had deepened, completely even in tone. Will you help him with one? The blood thundered in Molly's ears. Why wouldn't her heart stop pounding? She finally let go of the counter, taking the few steps up to the sofa to the large white fireplace. She sat down. She sank down. Can I go back a little bit? The blood thundered in Molly's ears. Why wouldn't her heart stop pounding? She finally let go of the counter, taking the few steps to the sofa by the large white fireplace. She sank down onto it. I, I mean, I suppose. Good. It's good that Sherlock is able to use you. Molly's back stiffened. Use me? For his experiments. You know how he is. Not a lot of people are willing to work with him. But you are. You'll take everything no matter how cruel he is. You stand by. You wait. You're patient. You live in the hope the day will come when he'll come to you. I know what that's like. Molly closed her eyes tightly. She should have hung up the phone, but something compelled her to just grip it tighter. Waiting, waiting so long. Sometimes you think you'll break if you wait any longer. But you have to believe. One day, he'll be there. Just as long as you're always there. Tears were stinging Molly's eyes. I should go. Did I make you cry? It's all right to cry. You'll feel better if you let yourself cry. Eurus drew in a breath. How many times have you cried for Sherlock? The tears slipped down Molly's cheeks. I've lost count. For him, or because of him, he can be so indelicate, crushing your fragile emotions with just a word. Oh, he says such awful things. Eurus went quiet for a moment. What does he say to you, Molly? I don't want to talk about it. Molly's voice was a pitiful whimper. It's just between us girls. If anyone understands it's me, I can tell how much it hurts you. I can hear it in your voice. You love him so much, but he's always hurting you. For years, you've been trying to move on, get past your obsession. You even had sex with Jim Moriarty in an attempt to forget Sherlock. Molly nearly dropped her phone. How did you know that? He told me. Eurus' voice was soothing, almost hypnotic. But you didn't forget Sherlock, did you? You couldn't. You love him. Why are you talking about this? Molly pleaded. Because it's funny. I was talking to Sherlock today. Molly tensed up. Sherlock told you it was funny I was in love with him today? He didn't talk about you today. He talked about Irene. Molly shook her head. She didn't understand what was happening. She should just hung up, should have, should have just hung up the phone. Irene? That woman? 
the one that died. Not dead, Eurus replied. He saved her life, then had sex with her. Oh, he had a lot to say about her. Today, Molly swallowed hard. Sherlock was talking about Irene today. I'm sorry, was I being rude? It runs in the family, doesn't it? You've had sex with him too, I know. But I thought you two were just sad about Mary. Comfort takes such strange forms. You were there for him. You're always there for him. I need to go, Molly hissed the words out. I can't talk about this anymore. I hope I haven't upset you too much, Molly Hooper. You should have a cup of tea. Being upset won't do you any good. Sherlock's not good at handling upset. With that, the phone disconnected. Molly tossed her phone aside, dashing the tears away from her cheeks. She shouldn't have gotten so upset. It was just a voice over the phone. Another home sibling, unable to control their mouth. Still, the nagging feeling remained in Molly's stomach. Forgetting all about going out, Molly walked to the kitchen to boil some water. So, um, that's the end of that fic. Um, yeah, this story was a, um, like a prequel to, um, the final problem, kind of an explanation as to where Molly's headspace was, um, when she got the phone call from Sherlock. Um, I needed to come up with an explanation as to why Molly was having such a bad day. And granted, Molly can have a bad day for whatever reason she wants, but I feel like Eurus would not take it to chance. She would want to guarantee that Molly was in the worst mood possible so that Sherlock would have the most trouble trying to get her to say those words. So I thought that Eurus would prep her basically and put her into the space where she's not really willing to do anything for Sherlock. Um, now this is the first story in a series. Um, it's called the Deadlier If You Mean It series. Um, which that title is a reference to um, the um, Batman Returns, uh, the 1992 Batman Returns. Uh, because there's um, this repeated exchange between Catwoman and Batman where um, they're underneath mistletoe and um, one of them says um, mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. And then the other one says, a kiss can be deadlier if you mean it. Um, so I decided to use that for the name of this series because while this story takes place before the conversation, uh, the phone call, um, the majority of the series takes place in the aftermath. And you do find out that when Sherlock said, I love you to Molly, he did absolutely mean it. And in this, you get a little bit of information as to the background, as to what's going on with Sherlock and Molly. But it does say that Sherlock and Molly have had sex at this point. And the next story um, in the series, which is called Context, does reveal more about their relationship. I actually, th yeah, I posted them on the same day. So that this story um, and that story really kind of work together because this one is right before the phone call and it's from Molly's point of view. And context is immediately after the end of the conflict with Eurus and it's from Sherlock's point of view. And the series is fairly long at this point. It's uh, 10 stories. And I've n even though I'm not really in the Sherlock fandom anymore, I've not... Um, discounted actually doing some more for it because I quite like uh, this version of the characters. I like their relationship. Uh, I think it's quite realistic to, um, you know, I just realized that I didn't press the button for my, um, my mic. So hopefully everything sounds okay um, because I'm just using the mic from the camera. Um, which that is unfortunate. Um, I had to do that yesterday as well. I've been having some mic problems, so, um, I hope it sounds okay because I don't really want to re-record re this. Um, so.
sorry, that's completely off topic, but yeah, um, I like this series a lot. I think this is my strongest version of Sherlock and Molly. This is the one that most resembles the characters from the series. You know, granted, that is because it's the only series that I've written that encompasses all the seasons of them. Um, I kind of, I had kind of large stories that take place after the end of each season. I didn't do one for season one because I actually didn't watch Sherlock season one until after season two it, it aired. Um, and at the end of series two I did The Full House, which um, I'm going to be talking more about that in a few weeks. Um, but and then after series three I did the story, um, I believe it's called Nothing Says I Love You. Um, which kind of, uh, takes place in the aftermath of series three. Um, and, or not in the aftermath, in the aftermath, it takes place during, because, uh, the last episode of series three takes place over many, many, many months. So it kind of takes place in that, uh, that time frame. And then I had this, which took place um, after the end of series four, which, um, you know, knock on wood, will be the end of the series. Um, I've, you know, spoken before about um, my feelings about Sherlock series four, and I think it's the best place to end it, and I don't think that they need to bring it back again. Um, so, um, yeah, no, I like this story. Um, I'll probably read some more of the um, the one shots in this series um, because this is something that I like quite a bit. It's a little more serious than the last fic that I read, uh, you know, considering the last one was about lap dances and this one is, you know, about um, psychological manipulation. And this series is uh, fairly serious, but I do like the relationship between Sherlock and Molly. It is. Um, uh, one of the, the stronger versions of that relationship I have. So, um, you know, tell me if you'd like me to read more of this series. Um, and, you know, tell me what you think of it. You can, you know, uh, head over to AO3 to do that um, and read the story for yourself um, and not have to deal with my horrible reading. Or you can tell me here. I'd really love to, um, to hear your thoughts. Um, you can tell me not only your thoughts on the story. You can tell me your thoughts on Sherlock and Molly, your thoughts on Sherlock. Um, though please be nice. Um, if this isn't your ship, um, please be nice about it. Um, because we can all ship whatever we choose to ship. And obviously I say this having quite a bit of experience with, um, the ship wars and the Sherlock fandom. Um, but I, I just, I happen to like what I like and there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, I'm going to end this here. Um, have a wonderful day. Uh, live long and may the force be with you.